Okay, so what's up, dears? Welcome to my vlog. Char again, again, charot lang. So again, we are now, um, uh, we are here again for another pre-recorded lecture in your analysis of urine and body fluids uh, laboratory. And this time, what we're going to talk about is, I think, um, something new to you. Um, and it's, uh, I know you've experienced urine analysis in your public health, no? Pero kanisha na part wala pa. Okay, so this is the last part na good of routine urine analysis. Um, and that is your microscopic examination. No more pilang taka weeks ga discuss ug ihi. My god, na lato na ko, charot. Pero, yeah, as mentioned, diba, uh, CM or your AUBF, ang pinaka primary specimen good nato is ihi. So, well, what can we do? Anyway, so again, this is the last part of uh, routine urinalysis, which is microscopic examination. So, by the name itself, we use the microscope to examine the urine. Um, medyo lengthy po ng discussion diri. Um, yeah, you'll get to be introduced to the different cells, mga crystals, casts, na naasaihi, and their clinical significance. Okay? So, alright. So, we shall now start. Okay. So, for microscopic examination, um, again, ang point lang, Anna, is we want to examine the urinary sediment. So, we, we, what we talk about sediment, we talk about sediment, guys. Um, uh, basically, a sediment is a general term for all of the urinary constituents formed elements na na to. So, mga cells, mga bacteria, casts, na. So, we refer to them as sediment. Okay? And all together po, collectively, kato mga constituents na sa ihi, they are collectively known as the urinary sediment. Okay? Again, the purpose is to detect and identify mga insoluble materials. Again, may it be cells, casts, bacteria, etc. na na sa ihi. Okay? And um, what it usually involves is the identification and aside from identification is quantity, uh, quantification. So, the um, importance of microscopic exam, guys, is you know how to identify. You know how to identify unsa niya na cell or unsa niya na uh, sediment. And then you quantify it also for reporting. Okay? All right. And again, um, the blood, kidney, and lower mga urinary tract, they can produce different formed elements again to the urine. And may include again RBCs, WBCs, epithelial cells, casts, bacteria, yeast, Parasites, mucus, spermatozoa, crystals, and maybe some even artifacts. So, basically, mo na to i-discuss sa microscopic exam. So, ay mong ihi, daghan kayo na siyang pwedeng sulod. Okay? Alright? So, dili na siya pwedeng, uh, dili na igo sa mga chemicals. Katotong na-discuss sa uh, um, chemical exam. Napun siya mga different cells na naa. Okay? Alright. So, first, of course, microscopic uh, screening. Um, some laboratories have opted na to create their own parang... Uh, flow or their guide or criteria na if kanyang macroscopic kung sa akong makitaan sa microscopic or sa chemical. And basically, diba, from the very start pag of our discussion sa urinalysis, I've always emphasized na the three parts of routine urinalysis are always interconnected to each other so you have to correlate the results with one another. Okay? So, dilik ka mo sa lig uh, on one parameter lang. You have to correlate. Okay? Because most often than not, um, most of the results sa imuhang um, each parameter, connected yun na siya to the next uh, part di ay. Okay? So, kung sa result sa physical, unsa yung makita dapat sa chemical. If kani ang chemical, unsa yung nasa microscopic, kinana na siya. Okay? So, you correlate. Alright. So, example lang, um, for color, um, significance sa high kung screening test, if color is different, usually maka-assume ka na blood maybe, na blood ang ihi, or other ka mga metabolic disorders, right? For clarity, um, again, hematuria, di ba hematuria, it's cloudy red urine. Ang hemoglobinuria or myoglobinuria, it could be clear, red urine. Diba? Yan, on sa mga tests, gani, on how to differentiate hemoglobinuria and myoglobinuria, you have Blundheim's test or ang color sa plasma. If myoglobinuria, on sa color sa plasma, clear because it's rapidly cleared by the body. And kung hemoglobinuria, on sa color sa plasma, color red. Okay, alright. And of course, uh, kato mga pathologic, non-pathologic causes of turbidity, diba? Okay, yeah, you know that already. Memorize na, master na. For blood, again, a significant sa microscopic niya, the presence of RBCs and RBC casts. Alright, protein could be the presence of cast or cells also. Nitrite, the presence of your bacteria and WBCs, which could signify a urinary tract infection. Okay, leukocyte esterase, still the same uh, reason for urinary tract infection. And glucose, the presence of yeast. Now, nga nung presence of yeast in glucose? Because, um, example guys, a very good example of your yeast infection is candida um, albicans. Okay? Now, in diabetic patients uh, or mga patients with DM, they have increased glucose, right? So, your candida albicans, they love the environment of um, increased glucose because they use that as their source of energy. That is why if taas glucose ang patient, 
if na diabetic ang patient, usually, dagan po ng yeast sa iyang ihi. Because again, um, the yeast, um, some of them can be normal flora, sa, usually sa females po, sa high, um, mga candida species. Um, so if ever to ask kag sugar, then you're giving more food to these uh, normal flora or mga yeast. That is why mudagan po ang yeast if to ask kag glucose. So basically, muna siya mukorelita. Um, if makakita ka sa lab, halata siya glucose. Mag- mag-assume na kahala, okay, basin sa microscopic daghan ng yeast, okay? Alright. And most most often, um, yeah, most of the time usually, uh, naagyod, naagyod siya yeast if taas ang glucose. Because again, for the reason that they like the glucose environment, um, they make it, uh, they, they, they use it as a source of energy. Okay? Manang usually, if naka yung DM, um, pwede ka magka-cospod og, or magka, magka-have, or magka, wow, ang konyo. Yes, Mark, okay pataroon, lag, lag, medyo, okay. Alright. Again, if you have uh, diabetes mellitus, sometimes po the patients may exhibit candidiasis. Okay? Candidiasis. Alright. Guys, ha, third year na mo, if how to pronounce mga iasis, dili na siya candidiasis, ha? Ginoo ko. Okay, candidiasis. Alright? Ascariasis. Diba? Gosh. Okay, third year na mo. Dapat alam na alam na to. Charot. Okay, again, so that's basically for macroscopic. Again, some macroscopic characteristics can already give you a glimpse, again, of what is the possible result sa chemical or microscopic. Okay? Alright. Next, for specimen prep, of course, number one, you have to use fresh specimens or preserved specimens. Because again, your formed elements, the cells, the casts, they may disintegrate easily if they are not well preserved or dili sila a process dayon. Okay? Yeah, muna siya reason. Alright, number two, um, you warm refrigerated specimens again to 37 degrees Celsius. Because again, um, or uh, yeah, because uh, if na yung mga crystals, right, na mu, um, mu precipitate at cold temperature and that could hinder your microscopic exam. So you want to warm them to refrigerate the temperature, yes. Okay? Alright, to dissolve some crystals. So, what's the Jones protein, guys? Diba? I mentioned ako sa protein. It dissolves at 100 degrees Celsius, pero mu precipitate siya at 40 to 60 degrees Celsius. If, so if you have a urine that is turbid at 40 to 60 degrees Celsius, yung pag warm mo to 100, kaya nawala ang turbidity, then press the buzzer, that could be the presence, or the urine could have the, uh, could have Benz, Benz Jones proteins. And asa ganyan makita na Benz Jones proteins, in what condition? Multiple myeloma. Alright? Multiple myeloma. So multiple myeloma, a type of cancer, a type of proliferative disease of uh, the plasma cells or the cells that produce your antibodies. Okay? Alright. Ayan. Diba? Next, you have midstream clean catch. Why? Because it would um, prevent external contamination. And you don't want external contamination kay makahinder po na siya sa imong pag-examine. Samot na if kay your urine passes through your, your urethra and urethra has a lot of, you know, squamous epithelial cells, normal flora also. So, this could hamper your identification. So, we use the midstream clean catch para in a way, again, um, minimize atong contamination. Alright? Okay. And of course, general rule, mix the specimens again before decanting into tubes. Because again, if dilin mo ma-mix, Diba? Kato na-mention na, formed elements could settle at the bottom. And if diliin mo siya ma-mix, pwedeng diliin siya ma-appeal sa pag-examine. Okay? Alright. Ayan. Now, for specimen volume, the standard amounts sa ihi na good is about 10 to 15 ml. And usually, ang kanan na volume, igo na na siya for urinalysis from physical to microscopic. And um, pwede pa kanina daw siya mo rerun. Okay? But most of the time, usually 12 ml, that would suffice na. Okay? Alright. So, here's an example of a grabe ka turbid na urine. So, Inana palandaan guys, physical palandaan, makayong kang turbid, daghan gina siyang sulod na mga cells or sediments, okay? So, pag decanting mo, alright, so only about 12 ml. So, magamit sila conical tube, pero kita, since air puff man, <laughs> normal test tubes lang, okay? Alright. Ayan. And for centrifuge, we are usually about 5 minutes for 1,500 to 2,000 RPM, revolutions per minute, or relative centrifugal force, usually RPM ang ginagamit sa lab. Napoy ubang RCF. Pero sa Strasinger na na siya formula on how to compute. Ay, hindi na compute Okay na siya. RPM. Susmat. Sus- okay, alright. Ayan. And a very good rule, do not use the braking mechanism. Now, your centrifuge has a braking mechanism. Why don't, uh, nga nung dili dapat i-use ang braking mechanism? Because if atong gamito ng braking mechanism, it can um, damage the sediments na na-form during um, centrifugation. So, ma-disturb ang sediment ni mo. Pag di can't, ni mo after sa breaking, pwedeng ma-appeal to mga sediments sa pagdikant ni mo. So therefore, dili nakaka-examine ng any cells, alright? Or any constituents na asa ihi. So, never use the breaking mechanism. Hulaton yun ni mo siya na muhunong ang centrifuge. Okay, di ba? Wala pa muna anadog pahulaton? 
So, wala. Ah, charat lang joke. Okay, alright. So, again, braking mechanism. Do not use a braking mechanism. Wait for the centrifuge to really stop. No, completely stop before you open it. Okay, because again, nga, no? Because um, by using the braking mechanism, you can disturb the sediment na na-form na sa ilalom sa tube. If and ma-disturb to siya, then pag decant ni mo, or like pag yabo ni mo sa supernatant, pwedeng ma-appeal to mga sediments. So, wala na kayo ma-examine, di ba? Wala yung pulos yung muhang pag medtech. Charot lang. Okay, alright. Ayan. Okay, so calibration, we use what we call your tachometer. Ayan, the tachometer. Please take note, dumalabas to sa boards. What, um, what instrument do we use as a calibrate, to calibrate our centrifuge? Wala nang iba, wag na mag -isip. It's your tachometer. Okay. Alright, now for specimen prep, di ba, nag-centrifuge ta, of course, ang sediments mo settle na siya sa ilalom. And we have your supernatant. We usually do what we call decantation or bottoms up. Okay, ay, bottoms up, bottoms up. Jojo <laughs> Bottoms up appearance, up appearance. Bottoms up na, uh, uh, unsa na, pagyabo, usually, bottoms up, di ba? Lahit na bottoms up in yung naibalan. I know, I know, miss ko na rin yan. Joke lang. Bottoms up, um, basically, imarang iyabo tong supernitan and then balik. Okay? And pag balik ni mo sa tube, mabilin tong sediments and some uh, fluid or supernitan na mabalik, uh, na mabilin. And that fluid will use to um, suspend balik the sediment. Okay? And ang mabili nalang is about 0.5 ml of urine. So, yan. So, this is the supernatant. Okay? So, what we do is, ato nang iyabo jud, like bottoms up, ana. And then, dahil mabili na liquid gamay na supernatant. And what we do is, ato na siyang ishake para masuspend balik ang sediment. Okay? And that is now what we uh, examine under the microscope. We make a smear or like microscope, uh, putang og one drop sa slide and then usually um, cover slip and then examine na. What we do usually, ang pinaka, ano daw, according to Strasinger, is it should be aspirated off and not decanted or not decantation. Because again, pwedeng ma-disturb na po ng mga sediments. And basi na mga important na sediments na pwedeng ma-appeal aning um, supernatant pag yabunin mo. Diba? So, sayang. Alright? Okay, but again, routine lab usually, ano lang, um, what's that? <laughs> bottoms up. Or sa lab po nato na activity. Okay, bottoms up. Uy, bottoms up. Alright. So again, urine after centrifugation and right is urine with uh, urine sediment with some residual na fluid after decantation. Okay. And the sediment volume examined is only about 20 UL or 0.02 ml. Okay. So, pila ka on sa volume sediment na lang ha? Sediment volume examined, pila? 20 UL or 0.02 ml. Please take note guys ha, very important, 1 ml is equal to 1,000 UL. Okay. Please take note. 1 ml is equal to 1,000 UL. Uh, magamit ninyo ni sa pag-convert sa HEMA. Okay? Kanang mga sa inyong RBC counts, WBC counts. <laughs> okay? Alright. Ayan. Okay. So again, that's for um, sediment uh, examination. Okay. Uh, oh yeah. For sediment examination, we use what we call your bright field microscopy. Again, objectives use LPO and HPO lang ta. Again, usually, mo start tag LPO and then HPO. Hindi na tamag oil immersion, guys. Ha? We don't use oil immersion. Kaya pwede ma-distort na ang mga sediments or hindi na kayo klaro ang iyong examin. Uh, makitaan. Under HPO, makita naman ang mga crystals, katong mga gagmay, mga cells, RBCs, uh, squamous epithelial cells. Yeah, makita na na siya under these objectives. Okay, and number of microscopic fields examined usually greater than equal to 10 fields. So, minimum of 10 fields. Okay, so dita mo go beyond that. Alright, in a way, that will... That will um, already be representative na of your specimen. Okay? So, bisag mga 1 to 10 fields. Okay? Ah, not, not, not 1 to 10 fields. More than 10 fields. Sorry. Okay. Alright. And, guys, please take note there in your um, laboratories, routine laboratory usually. Ako sa, sa Galliaris and Soto. Same sa like machine na ginagamit. Um, automated na ginag microscopy. Like the, the, the machine uh, pictures the different sediments. Yun. And pwede niyo na siyang identify Pero identify na po niya mismo. But if na kayo mga questions about uh, sa pag-identify sa machine, pwede mo i-manual identify sa, mas sa computer na, uh, na attached to the machine. Kaya mo send out siya pictures sa kada sediments dito. Okay? And naayo sa ka-machine that uses fluorescence dye. So, iyahanggi na um, butangan o fluorescence na dye ang mga sediments. And it uses two dyes. You have um, fena... Ah, sorry, wrong spelling. Fena... Fenath... Fenathra... Oh my gosh. Fenan... Fenanthridine, Fenath, Fenath. Oh my gosh, sorry, sorry naman guys, Fenan. Bang nga kung spelling run, what's happening, Mark? Epekto ng pagkasinggol? Ah, joke lang. Fe, Fenathridine, Fenathridine, uh, ayan. And second one is carbocyanin. Now, um, 
wala mong niya sa Strasinger na 6th edition. Gitangtang niya. If nakabasa na mo Strasinger, na siya sa mga appendix, ang automation of urinalysis. Now, in the 5th edition, na apa niya. And nigawas niya sa boards. <laughs> All right, I think nigawas among boards pod. Yeah. Yeah, nigawas akong boards or or previous board exams. And wala na siya sa 6th edition sa Stras. Na siya sa 5th. Now, ang phenathridine, it stains DNA of the cells. Okay? And color niya is orange. Okay? Orange fluorescence. And carbocyanin is color green. Yang stain ng other materials. Mga negatively, ch- negatively charged um, negatively charged na mga structures. So, example, mga mitochondria. Okay? Na, mitochondria, etc. Okay? So, please take note, guys, ha? A machine in the automated microscopy. Okay? Dilita ng machines mo gamit og fluorescence. Naray usa, naay mo usa ka machine daw dito na mo gamit og fluorescence. And it uses two dyes. Okay? You have phenathridine. It stains. Again, ang siyang ginastain? DNA. Okay? And it's color orange. And carbocyanin, it's color green. It stains um, the color... Uh, it stains the mga negative na mga structures. It could be the... Um, Mitochondria pa ito. Narimod ko sa other mga structures. Pero, mura na siya. Basta ganyan yung stain of DNA, wala na ilain si phenathridine. How did I remember? Phenathridine ay letter D, stains DNA. Okay, di ba? Ang carbocyanin, wala. So, unsa na ilain letter D, phenathridine. Okay? Alright. Ano na siya? Phenathridine? Phenathridine. Yeah, phenathridine. Okay? And carbocyanin, the two dyes na ginagamit for automated microscopy in some machines. Okay? Alright. So, but most of the time, we use bright field microscopy. Okay, if manual lang na microscopic exam. Okay, now in your Strasinger, you have different types of microscopes. Um, again, medyo dili na ako i elaborate. I'll leave that to Mambi. Um, but you have, ako ra i ano is your polarizing. For polarizing, guys, basa ganin polarizing, usually ginagamit lang niya for crystals and mga lipids. Okay, because they, they have the ability to, to scatter light. Chakto ba kung term? Basa, they have the ability to kanang. They have the ability to scatter light, yeah. Or they have the ability... They are what we call mga biofringent, okay? Biofringent na mga substances or mga elements. They have the ability to, I think, scatter light yun ang, ang meaning sa biofringents. Nalimot lang ko. But again, for polarizing microscopy, crystals, lipids, okay? Alright, but again, for manual na to na microscopic exam, we use, again, um, the bright field microscopy. One of our best friends, okay? Alright, and now we go to the different sediment constituents. So, we'll start first with the cells, okay? Next, you have the casts. Finally, the crystals. And number four is other structures and artifacts, okay? So, for our next video, we'll start first with the cells, okay? Alright.